Strength for Runners, cycle one, week two, session one. For today's session, you're gonna need uh, some weight, so kettlebell, dumbbell, uh, something that has a little bit of resistance behind it. So ideally try and avoid you know, water bottles or anything like that, just so you've got, like I said, at least six to eight kilos in terms of that weight. Uh, obviously, if you don't have that, then body weight will be absolutely fine. You also need a uh, long looped resistance band, a nice thin one, uh, ready for some core exercises towards the end. So in terms of warm up first, all right, sticking with the usual drills for these warm up exercises, we're going for those heel walks and those toe walks. So remember the heel walks, pulling the toes up towards the shins, walking on the heels, small steps, legs straight, nice upright torso, and then Toe walks after that, so coming onto the balls of the feet, lifting the heels off the ground, and again, small steps, legs straight, nice upright torso. You're gonna do 20 steps on the heel walks, then 20 steps on those toe walks. Then from there, you're gonna go into your adductor rocks. So remember, coming onto the floor, into that hands and knees position, stick one leg straight out to the side, push the hips back towards the heel of the bent leg. So you rock in forward and backwards, keeping that posture, so pressing through the floor so you're not slouching through that lower back, and you're just gonna rock forward and backwards out of that. So again, from the side, you can see I'm not slouching like this into it, I'm actively pressing through the floor, rocking forward and backwards, and you're gonna go for 15 each side on those. Then from there into your glute bridge march. So for these now, getting into that glute bridge position. So remember, we want the feet about hip width apart. We want that lower back comfortably pushed into the lower floor, into the floor. So think about tucking your pelvis under before you lift the hips. Then you're gonna drive them up. So you can see the height isn't the important thing here. It's about keeping that lower back out of the equation. So we're not bothered about this and arching at the top. We're tucking the pelvis under, lift the hips. You'll feel a little bit of tension through the quads. That's the kind of height that you need to focus on. Hold that tension now as you then bring one knee towards the chest at a time, alternating legs, making sure we're keeping that engagement through the glutes and not yanking the knee into the chest like this to put us out of position. So alternating legs, you're gonna go for 10 per side or 20 reps total on that one. And then finishing off with some Spider-Man lunge. So you can take a big step forwards, drop both hands on the inside of the front leg to the floor, you're then going to try and push the elbows to the ground. So you can see I'm sending the elbows backwards, breaking the elbows, come back to that straight arm, and then the arm that's closer to the front leg, reach up to the ceiling, back to the floor, and then stand back out of the lunge. So come back to this position before changing legs. So lunge, hands, elbows, reach. One more from the front. It's a big step. You can drop the back knee to the floor, hands to the ground on the inside of that front leg. And like I said, bend at the elbows, try to drop into the ground. Don't worry if you can't get to the floor, just go as low as you can. Back up, rotate to the ceiling, and then step back. And you're gonna alternate legs on that one for five per side. So heel toe walks, 20 steps on each movement. Then into your adductor rocks for 15 per side. Your glute bridge march for 20, so 10 per side and then those Spider-Man lunges with that rotation for five per side, 10 total. Okay, so one round through all of that for your warm-up. Take your time with it, focus on quality and control. In terms of main session then, first two movements we're gonna do are some lateral movements, so looking at working the muscles on the outside of the thighs, but also today on the inside of the thighs, so abductors and adductors. So first movement we're gonna do is some lateral lunges, okay? So again, ideally if you have got some weight, you're gonna take it into the chest, so kettlebell or dumbbell, hold it however is comfortable, just want it at chest height, nice and close to the body. So lateral lunges, taking the weight into the chest. Remember, we're gonna take a big step out to the side. As we do, we're gonna sink this hip out and back, so like a little bit of a squat. Imagine sitting into that chair, as the other leg stays straight, come back to standing and push back into the middle. So you're trying to slow yourself down, into that deceleration element as you step into it, keeping that chest up as high as you can as you sink those hips back. You're gonna do all the reps on one side first before changing over to the other. So you're gonna go for six to eight on one leg and then six to eight on the other leg. Then from there, you're gonna go straight into your side-lying adductor lifts. So for this one now, like I said, 
we're going to work the muscles on the inside of the thigh. So you're going to come lying on your side. Make sure you've got a nice straight line through the whole body. Again, whatever you need to do for the upper body to stay relaxed, that's fine. And for this one now, you're going to take the top leg and you're going to bend the knee and bring the foot so it's relatively flat on the floor. doesn't matter about the angle of the knee. The key is you've just got some leverage to be able to push into the floor to then lift the bottom leg that's straight. So you can see top leg bent, foot flat on the ground as best you can. And then all you're going to do is lift the bottom leg towards the ceiling. So the inside of my foot is pointing up to the ceiling and we're just going to lift as high as we can. So you're going to pause at the top, control back down, working those inside of thigh muscles as you go. So it's not going to feel too intense. You're not going to feel sort of a massive amount of fatigue. Well, it depends on how strong your adductors are. All right, but you will, should feel it working the inside of the thigh just to lift that leg. You're gonna do 15 on one side and then 15 on the other. So lateral lunges, six to eight per leg. Remember all reps on one leg first before you change over to the other one. And then those side lying adductor lifts for 15 on one side and then 15 on the other. Rest 30 to 60 seconds, three rounds on those two exercises. Then from there, we're gonna go into a bit of core. So we're gonna do some uh, dead bugs and some half kneeling uh, power off presses. So for the dead bugs, remember, the key thing with this movement is the lower back. So there's a simple uh, concept of reciprocal inhibition. So that means that if one muscle's engaged, the opposite muscle has to relax. So if you are arching your lower back on these, that's gonna engage the muscles in your lower back, that's gonna turn off the opposite muscles, i.e. the abdominal muscles, the core muscles. So we've got to really focus on pushing the lower back into the floor because that turns those off and then gets this engaged, which is, means we're going to get the best out of this exercise. So from there, remember we want the lower back flat into the floor, legs at 90 degrees, arms above the chest. That's your start position. Now, we're then going to lower opposite arm and opposite leg towards the ground without letting that lower back arch. So you may find that you need to reduce the range of motion, i.e. don't go all the way to the floor finding that point where you can keep that lower back pressed into the ground. If that's still too much, then just do the legs on their own. So keep the arms above the chest, lower back flat, and just lower the legs towards the ground. So you can straighten them, that's gonna be a bit more challenging, or you can keep them bent and just tap the heels to the floor that way. So just build up the progression to really focus on keeping that lower back pressed into the floor until eventually you can do arm straight, leg straight, all the way to the ground without that lower back arching. And you're gonna alternate sides, regardless of which progression you're gonna go for, and you're gonna go for 20 reps, so 10 per side on that one. Then from there, into your power loft press. So we're gonna do it from what's called the half kneeling position now. So you're gonna set it up at around sort of knee height, waist height. You're gonna drop into a lunge so that your front leg is the one that's furthest away from the position that you're gonna set up on, okay? So then from there, we're gonna shuffle sideways away from the anchor point. So remember, the further away we are, the harder it is. So we're gonna shuffle away, but that our shoulder is in line with the anchor point. We're gonna bring it into the chest. So remember, we want one hand over the band, and then the other hand goes over that fist to secure it into place. And then all we're gonna do is make sure we're not arching the lower back, so pushing the back knee through the floor, and then just hold that band out to the front. So it's in a nice straight line from the chest. The band is being obviously pulled towards the anchor point. So I'm resisting that rotation as I go into that position. We're gonna hold that for 20 to 30 seconds on one side. Then you're gonna flip 180 degrees. Remember, switch legs, so the, outside, the front leg is the one on the outside. And again, hold that position, really driving that back knee through the floor to engage that glute. So 20 to 30 second hold on that, making sure we don't arch that lower back. So 20 reps on the dead bugs, 10 per side, 20 to 30 second hold per side on the power off press, and then 30 to 60 second rest, and again, three rounds on that. Really focus on quality and control on these two core exercises. They're a basic entry level core exercise, all right? But again, they need to be done correctly for us to be able to progress. If you're already pretty proficient at those two movements, then you can increase the reps on the dead bugs, so go for 15 per side and increase the time on the power off press to 30 to 60 seconds per side. If you've already got the movement down quite well, then obviously you can push the time and the reps a little bit more to make it more challenging, all right? So give that a try. Any questions always, just let me know.